is Jim Byrne, Principal Systems Engineer for Data Pivot Technologies. Today we're going to continue our Commvault 101 series and the topic for today is how to do a file restore. I'll be going through the three uh, basic parts of a file restore. First is we're going to restore by a backup job. I'll show you how to pick either the latest backup job, which is what you'll usually do, or we can do it from a time range. The other thing I'm going to go through with you is how to search for a file. And what I mean by that is sometimes the user will give you the location of where the file is in the client and I'll show you how to walk through Commvault, uh, just basically browse to the file to do the restore. Or if you can't find the file, I'll show you how you can just put in the name of the file into the GUI and Commvault will find um, all the files with that name and show you what directories are in and that you can help, uh, you know, it'll help you figure out where the file is so you can restore it. And lastly, I'll be going through how to restore the file, what copy you want to pull it from, whether you want to pull it from the primary on-site copy or if you want to pull it from a secondary copy. And with that said about our overview here, let's get started. Here I have the Commvault GUI and I have a few clients in my lab. And what I'm going to show you is this one here. This is CentOS uh, 7C2. And when you go to search for a file, you do this from the subclient level. And the example I'm going to give today, we're going to say there's a user who uh, noticed all of his logs have been deleted. And he, he suspects he may have gotten ha hacked. So he wants to see his messages file from September 7th. So we're going to begin. So we've got our, you know, our, our ticket open with the user and we're going to start doing the recovery for him. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our backup history to see where can we pull this data from, where we can get it as close as we can to September 7th. So we pull our backup history and we see we have all these jobs running. We're in a properly configured environment. We've got backups running every day and we go down and we're like, ah, there we go. Got one right there from the 7th. And this job completed at 5.16 in the morning. So I'm going to search from this point backwards. And you'll notice I have incremental backups here. So what Commvault's going to do is it'll merge these together into a backup set. And you don't have to do anything. Commvault does this automatically. And it'll give you representation of what that machine looked like on the 7th of September. And incidentally, you'll notice some of these backups run a little long. This is a uh, test environment, so we're just trying to show functionality, not performance. So some of these run a little long. If you're in an actual production environment, a typical incremental backup just takes a few minutes. Okay, with that said, let's go through uh, method one of doing a restore. We're going to browse to the location based upon what the user provides us. So here we are. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say browse and restore. I'm going to pick a time range and I know I want to go from the 7th of September and we're going to go from 6 in the morning and now I'm going to click view content. Commvault goes through, grabs all those backup jobs, merges them together to give me a representation of what that machine looked like on the September 7th. So now we're going to scroll through and incidentally down here you can see um, Commvault breaks down how much is in each directory when you're doing a restore. It'll, it, as I walk through you you'll see that change. It's good it kind of helps you if you have to do hunting for things and you want to see where stuff is it kind of shows you what directories have the most stuff in them. Alright so here's our log directory I'm in var log And we see, where are you? It's going to get messages. There it is. So that's the file the user is looking for. They want to look at that. And to get that file, you would just check that. And then you would say recover all selected. Now, let's say you got the request from the user and he said, hey, I need you to go find uh, var ADM messages. He's a Solaris guy. He's confused. And he's like, you're looking in here and you're like, uh, there is no var ADM messages file. You know, you're a Windows person, and you're like, I don't know where this thing is. So let me go search for all the message files, and we'll see if we can figure this out. So here we are. We're back at the subclient for CentOS. I'm going to right click. Now, before I pick this, right? Now I'm going to go here to find. So it's the same deal. So let's do, we're going to do messages because we know that's the name of the file. We're going to assume that's right. 
And then we're going to go to our time range. And I know I want to go before September 7th. So there we are, September 7th, and we'll do 6 a.m. Here we go. And under here, under advanced options, you can pick where you want to pull these from. I'll show you, I'll go over this a little bit later when I kick off the restore. But see how this says copy one? This says primary. Watch what happens when I do copy two. See how it goes to second? That's my offsite copy. So sometimes when you go to do a restore, somebody may want you to do a restore to a server that's off-site somewhere. So, you know, of course, you'd want to do the restore from a local media agent. So you'd want to do the one in that data center. And, you know, if you had picked the primary, you'd be restoring over the WAN. So if you know where the client is and you know there's a media agent local to that client, you can pick it here. But in this case, I'm going to go from the primary because that's inside my data center. So I'm going to uncheck this. I don't need to use this. Back to the time range, got that picked. And our filter is all set up for messages, so we'll hit it. Now this is gonna look kind of similar, but the difference is it goes and finds the file and it tells you where it is. So you know that the user said, hey, I need that in var ADM, but you're like, oh, wait a minute, I think the guy made a mistake. It's var log, I think that's what he's looking for. So we're gonna go for get that form. All right, and then you click Recover All Selected. So whether you do the Browse way or you do the Find way, you still get this little button here that says Recover Selected. So this is the same. Click this button. We go to the next screen. There's a few options in here that you can do. You can overwrite a file if you like. And I usually don't do this because I'm always worried that, uh, you know, especially if I'm restoring files where there's, like, corruption involved, the copy you have currently may be better than the one I'm pulling from the backups. So you should either you know, rename the file on the client or in here you can restore it to another location. And with that said, uh, let's say inside the ticket, the user said, you know, I'd like you to take that, that log file and put it over in var temp. I'm going to get it from over there. So I'm going to just, just to show you how you can do this, you can put it at another location. You could put a slash home if you wanted to or whatever. But in my example, I'm just going to put var temp. And then I'm going to say, Okay, and I'll take a second to get going, and then we'll go to the job controller, and you can see the restore has started, and this won't take long. I'm pulling this off of a, a media agent that's all disk, and while we're waiting for that, let me go pull up my... This is CentOS uh, 7C2. I'm logged in using PuTTY. This is using SSH. And I'm already in var temp. And the date today is the 18th. And it just finished. So I'll do an ls, whoops, dash L. And there's the file that I put back. See the date? It's at the time of that. It finished the backup at 5.01 in the morning. So it put the, you know, the time back for you. So that, that's pretty much all there is to restoring a file in Commvault. And I know I showed you a Linux version here, but if you're restoring to Windows, it's really the same thing. You're just walking through directories and whatnot. And, you know, the whole process is, is pretty simple. The user is going to give you a location if they can. And then you're going to go through your backups to see, you know, what restore points you have. So you can pick the one you want to get you to the, the uh, file. The, the, you know, the date, the backup history is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and then uh, last but not least, you're going to pick where you want that restore to come from. You can come from the primary copy or you could do it from an off-site copy. I even have clients um, who back up to the cloud. They'll just do it once in a while just to test to make sure everything's working okay. Or maybe they want to test out how their tape libraries work and they might pick another copy. So usually you'll restore though from the primary copy. Okay, so that's it. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, post them in the comment section below on our YouTube channel and I'll be glad to uh, answer them. All right, thank you.